speaking of other heroes in the pro-life movement, beyond Mr. Dis, or in this case, heroin. Heroin, yes. Make sure we get our genders Inspiration correct. Inspiration to us all. Um, used to be known as Joan Andrews back when she was flaunting the law down in Florida and getting thrown <laughs> in prison. Uh, a hero of mine, and I think of all of ours, Joan Andrews, now known as Joan Andrews Bell, and she joins us by phone from New Jersey. Hello, Joan. Hello, Mark. How are you? Doing really well. Well, I, I assume you knew that I'm not embarrassing you by telling you that you were a hero to a lot of us. You're very kind. I assume you knew that. <laughs> well, there's uh, many, many, many who did what I did. So. Um, well, Joan, uh, for those who may not know, and, and Troy knows, remembers the story, you served how many years in prison? Um, two and a half years. I'm two and a half years in prison um, for walking into an abortion cl- clinic and cutting off the cord that plugs in the suction machine. Is that right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get two and a half years for that. It could have come out sooner. I understand they made you an offer. You could have come out a little sooner. Yeah. Well, I was non clock in jail, so they, they were going to have me do the, the time to the door, uh, the five years. They gave me a five-year sentence. But uh, halfway through, they got so many letters. The governor got so many, like 60,000 letters and all, and people were boycotting, um, pro-lifers were boycotting um, uh, Walt Disney down there, Disney, Disneyland or whatever. Wow. Yep. And so, so he kicked me out of the state. <laughs> you know, whatever it is called. <laughs> We're kicking you out of jail. You're non-cooperative. Out of the state, she says. <laughs> well, like well Joan, you've got a new project, and you called me here uh, a few weeks ago uh, telling me about this new project and um, asking if we could uh, make the pro-life community aware of it. So that's what we're doing. And if you can just take a couple of minutes here to tell us what you're doing, and, and um, we're going to put your email address up on the screen so that people can contact you. But tell us tell us what you're doing. What kind of Thank trouble you. are you getting into now? <laughs> Thank you. Um, about four years ago, we started uh, two apostolates. Uh, they are lay apostolates. Um, they have a Catholic charism as far as a prayer life, but um, it's for lay people to come and join um, other um, um, people who love little babies. And one of the group is called Dei Glorium, for the glory of God. And um, the the work of Dei Glorium is threefold. Number one is the vast majority of the of the um, those who adhere to it will go out to the abortion mill every single day and pray from before the abortion mill opens till it closes at night, and that will be their daily work, um, six days a week and one hour on Sunday. Even if it's closed, they'll pray there for one hour. And that's their work. And the other thing they'll do is take in homeless pro-lifers into their community. Like pro-lifers, you know how some of us just get so burnt out or wounded, um, and we feel I'm homeless. Yeah, I know a number of homeless pro-lifers who just go to the abortion mill and live in an abandoned building or something. So they'll take in these people so they can live in a community of pro-lifers and pray together, get good nourishment and, and care. And then the third a thing that Dave Gloriam does that we're trying to do. We need 18 people to do this. We have to get our numbers up. That's why I needed your help, Mark, to ask you to come join us. And uh, we want 18 people so we can have two people in front of the Supreme Court, two people on Supreme Court, I should say, two people in front of the White House and two people in front of Congress at all times, day and night, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to the Holocaust ends. And we would have two uh, big rotation shifts, and it all worked out where you'd end up being in front of the abortion mill like eight hours a day, basically, with shifts and all. So that's what we want. We want the presence of truth and love and prayer in front of these institutions our, of government, which have not only allowed abortion but mandates it. Mm-hmm. And, and then it levels the full extent of the law, the police and the, and the cleaning, the, uh, sometimes even the army, to stop pro-life and some nonviolently trying to save their little brothers and sisters who are being put to death. So we need people to join this. We need people. Um, you'll live in pretty much poverty, but um, you, you'll live in glorious uh, love of Christ and, and, and camaraderie. The second group is called Gethsemane, the totally separate group. Uh, we, um, um, Gethsemane, um, we're asking people to come and it, 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 what the time period would be, like even for Day Glorium, that you give a year promise 
to do this mission for a year, a simple promise after a three year, a three month formation period. You have a formation period, um, um, each time you live together and learn about it. Then if you want, you can make a simple promise to do this for one year and then you could continue to re-up if you want to <laughs> uh, for years to come. But, um, at the Gethsemane, you do the same thing as far as a year as a, as a lay uh, uh, apostolate that we do invite religious to join if they wish. Um, but in Gethsemane, you make a commitment to rescue, to um, go to, into the, to the doors of the abortion mill and stand and block little babies being brought in to be killed. And you do this totally nonviolently, you do it prayerfully, you do it in love. But it basically, it, it stands what the whole rescue movement stood for. Right. What well, you say is, excuse me. yeah, go ahead. Well, Joan, I'm sorry, we're out of time. We, we've oh, we've run sorry. way over. But I just wanted to make sure you understand that, that um, uh, we'll do what we can to direct people towards you. And we're going to put your your uh, email address on the screen and so people can, can uh, get a hold of you. And Thank you. I'm hoping that you will get a large turnout. I hope you have too many people. Right. Oh, we can never have too many. Can I just say one thing? Sure. Above all else, with everybody, no matter what kind of pro-life work you're doing or we're doing, we could go out to the abortion mill one day a week for one hour in front of uh, of the death camps to be the presence of Jesus' love and mercy there because we cannot lose sight of the individual child dying in our neighborhood despite the millions who are dying. It can't just be a cause. So despite everything else we do, if we can get out to our local abortion at least once a week for a whole hour of prayer, presence, and depleting on behalf of the children dying would be great. And that's what I beg for. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Joan, for coming on and telling us about this. And obviously we'll be praying for you to have a tremendous success here as you've had in the past. And uh, again, uh, we just admire you so much for what you've done. You've been a You've been a beacon for a lot of people in the pro-life movement, I can assure you. And it's rare you'll find someone as committed to the cause. You hear it in her voice. You hear the passion. She is 100% committed to saving babies, like Joe Scheidler and a lot of the other heroes uh, of our our movement over over a very long period of time. So if you can spend some time in prayer in front of the abortion clinic, contact Joan, and she's going to plug in. Yeah, that's right. She'll she'll convict you. She'll convict you for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Joan, thank you so much for being with us. And tell us, oh, and keep us surprised on how things are going, and be sure and say hi to your, your sister Susan for me. I certainly will. And God bless you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, Father Frank? Yeah. You still there? That's, she, you know, what we just heard was very beautiful. You know, I know Joan very well and her husband, Chris, and she uh, and all the adopted children they have, special needs children together with their their, their natural daughter, um, natural born daughter. You know, she she is articulating here what we always say at, at Priest for Life that pro life is not just a cause or a movement, it's a spirituality. And with Joan, that's so clear. You know, it flows from your faith, it leads you back to your faith. Right. Your relationship with the unborn is all about your relationship with God. And um, marvelous thing. And it's interesting how someone who sacrificed as much as Joan has is able then to call other people to make serious sacrifices. Some of what she was saying was pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, serious sacrifice. And she's not afraid to ask for that, and neither, sh- neither should any of us be. Neither should we be. That's right. 